Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And a big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you for joining us. Um, boy, I tell you, in between the weather, And the amount of stuff that's come in here, not outboard related stuff, you understand. Talking lawnmowers, weed whips, chainsaws, yada, 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 yada. Um, I ain't been able to get much outboard stuff done because I got, I don't know, all of a sudden a onslaught. A guy brought four pressure washers in here. Then I got a walk behind weed whip. I'm going to tell you a secret. After I repaired that push weed whip, I used it around the house a little bit. That's called proven grounds. You understand. I have to make sure it works properly. So, lawnmowers, weed whips, and you name it. Got a, Just got a couple more chainsaws in after just finishing a couple more chainsaws. So, been a little thin on the outboard stuff getting caught up. But anyway, I think I got most of it caught up. I got one more lawnmower to come in here today, and uh, that one can wait a day or two. We're going to do some outboard stuff. Um, and then, the weather... It was raining, blowing sideways 40 knots, and then it cleared up, and I thought, well, I'm going to mix up me some good treated gas. What do you mean you don't treat your gas? Of course you treat your gas. mix up some good treated gas and get in that boat of mine and uh, try and get one or two more boat rides in and uh, and so I had to take my little kicker off and get it all cleaned up flushed out lubed up and just gone over because that little kicker what gets you back home is your most important motor you remember the one I'm talking about right it's a little 3.3 made in Hong Kong, Evan Rood. It run. It's a little cutie. Did I mention it's a cutie? I'll show you. But I was looking at my kicker bracket. I'm going to take you out there and look you around. And this is the kicker bracket that came with the boat. And it ain't much. Now I have used, used it before. Not to get home, but just to kind of make sure it works. But it, it's not good. Um, you know, it, it, it kind of works just off friction. You got that uh, deal like that, and then you you see it's not good. And the wood starting to rot. Yeah, so it's not good. But I had a fella come in here and gift me this one. 
Now, I've got some other ones in my Connex, but he gifted me this one, and it's what I call old school good. You know what old school good is, right? But um, it was filthy. I washed it off with the hose and a little soap. And it says, made in the USA. Bremer, B-R-E-M-E-R. -E -E Bremer, looks like FG Company. It's a TW-20, made in USA. Now, they've added, somebody added this piece of flat stock luminous to it. But it's kind of cool. Um, you know, it's still got some of the mud on it and stuff. But you've got, so it would be mounted to the boat. And then you've got this here. So that would come on down. And then you've got this little spring-loaded thing. Woo! And that pops it back up. So when you watch this right here. And it goes in like that. And then when you're ready to let it up, you push down a little bit. I kind of like that. And so I thought, I'm going to wash it off some more because you can see when it came in here it looked like it had been, almost been buried in mud um, so I'm gonna clean it off some more and for my little kicker I don't really need this aluminum plate but it's there might as well leave it so he said the guy that gave it to me said that it um, he had a 15 on it and it worked it no problem so I'm going to clean that up and put on my welded aluminum skiff. I think it's a lot better than what I got. You understand? So I want to thank Mr. Bremer, FG, TW20 for this. Yeah, I like it. It's old school good. I like it. So I think I'm going to put that on the welded aluminum skiff. Now, like I said, I don't know if you can see, there's that push behind Weed Whip and lawn mowers, chainsaws, another chainsaw way back in there. Um, and then I'm going to make a outboard stand out of that pressure, old pressure washer frame. At least I think that's what I'm going to do. But, there's my little cutie. I got to do something about the hood on it. Ain't got no latches. They're all broke off. I'll come up with something. I'll come up with something. So I was like, what outboard do I want to bring in here? And, uh, so, I thought about it and I said, yeah, I think I'm going to start on that one. And I'm kind of going to bring it in because I got to make a stop right out here first. And we got to do some washing on it. I showed it to you before, but I've been kind of jonesing to get that one in here and see if we can't get it running. And uh, so I'm going to give it a wash. Then we're going to do a fax check. And hopefully, if we don't find nothing terribly wrong with it, See if it's all right. So let me get things together. I'll be right back. We all know what it means when I wear the hat. It means somebody came a bearing the gifts. So it's Christmas in September. Let's go look at it. Well, there she is. Guy come in and said, I broke the tiller handle. And uh, he sure did. So it's broke, did it, did it off. But pulls over good. Feels like it's good, pretty good compressionis. Overall, it looks good. The propeller's in nice shape. Other than the broken, tiller handle it's a nice looking little four stroke 
it's got some spider webs and such in there. Um, so you know them creepy crawlies that want to get me in there. But overall, it's not bad. I mean, a little salty here and there, but nothing that won't clean up. So they came a bearing gifts. It's Christmas in September. This is something I, I see a lot in my neck of the woods on these Yamahas. Um, yeah, it's all completely froze. I don't know what Yamaha has been doing, but I can almost guarantee you that this engine has virtually no hours on it. What this engine has done has been somebody's emergency backup kicker, just like my little Cody. They put it on the back. Yep, the clamps are froze. They put them on the back of a skiff, a big skiff, and this is their get them home motor, and they just sit there and get drenched in salt water, and then this kind of thing happens. When they need to use it to get them home, Napola. Yep. So I'm gonna see if I can't, I think on this one, rig something up. I'm surprised that latch works. I'm gonna see if I can't rig something up different than that tiller that came with it. We'll have to see what I can come up with. But overall, like I said, the propeller's good, nice long shaft, and little Yamaha four-stroke 9.9. .9. Do you remember that guy there? Look how bad that thing is. And the reason why I wanted to go ahead and get on this when I'm in Jones in a little bit is it's just about to the print where if I don't do something it's gonna be parts now you look at just how rusty nasty that thing is something you don't see too often a metal CDI box now This one has been sitting literally for decades. <laughs> I don't know when they came out with these, but it was, you see all that salt in there? It was road hard. Just, just, ugh. Sorry about the sun. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> this is Alaska. I'm not sorry about the sun. Um, see it's full of creepy crawlies that want to get me. So before I even start to wash it, I think. Um, yeah. But, believe it or not, the thing... <laughs> look at that. Look at, the, look at the stuff coming off. It has good compressiones. I mean, just going by feel, we'll do a proper compression check. And you say, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? This was gifted to me, and I really want to save it. And there it is. Tohatsu. Gesundheit. So, Tohatsu 18 on its last leg. This is the epitome of outboard abuse. I mean, that ain't no kidding. But, I mean, there's neutral. And there's reverse. So, shift's good. The throttle setup is off a of Nissan and does not work. It tries to, but it's just, it's all that's going to have to come off. 
And if you look down here, you see you see them creepy crawlies that want to get me. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get some tools and and get a wheel puller and let's see if we can get this flywheel off and the CDI off. Everything's gonna have to be taken care of and repainted clean. And we got to get that Okaba Rapa off and see if it'll even come off. So let me get some tools. Okay, I moved it in here. Um, and I started looking at the wires. Hopefully that sunlight ain't too bad. Hopefully. Is that better? Heck, I can't see because now the sun's shining in the lens. But anyway, because of what I call the, the Suzuki effect on the older two-stroke Suzukis, um you can just barely detect spark on those motors a lot of times and uh, so before I tried the spark spider I wanted to put this little spark checker on here because I can adjust the gap and so I'm just on one spark plug wire here I don't know if you're going to be able to see it so I'm just opening that like a little over a sixteenth inch I've got the one half Milwaukee on it to spin it. And I'm getting nothing on that one, which is what I would expect, and I'll tell you why here in a second. And there's the next one. Nothing. So I'm getting no spark. And uh, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a faint spark, kind of like the old Suzuki two-strokers. So then I put on the actual Spark Spider, which jumps a, a good size gap here. And I put it on. sun's glaring I can't even see whether you're in there I hope you are but anyway right in here and I get nothing and the reason why I say that's what I expected is because looking at this thing I see wires um, let me unhook the spark spider Okay, so I've got the wires coming out from under the flywheel, got yellow and white, and I've got red, blue, and black. The kill wires coming from the kill switch are brown and black. So here's the kill wires that would go to the kill switch. It's unhooked, so the kill switch is not the problem. But then when I look in here, there's no wires at all going to this coil <laughs> that, that I see and I don't see a place so I'm thinking something's rotted off here or something because this coil is completely isolated there's nothing going to it so that ain't gonna work and I don't know what I did there it is so that ain't gonna work you gotta have some coil wire let's see if I can get in there yeah. yeah. Okay. See if something rotted off this thing or what? What did it? What is it? There. Well, that's kind of neat. It's got a spacer for that bottom one. Where do the wires go? Interesting. So, I'm going to have, uh, maybe, yeah, as rusty as this thing is, 
it looks like there was a tab right here. So the, the, the hot was probably there and the ground was probably here. And what I found with these old Suzuki's, Tahatsu's, and the different things, the Asian made motors of old, so to speak, is that's the common throw them in the shed and let them get in this condition. Um, they lose spark. And also I found on this one, where's it at? Um, this is, I don't know if I can strip it back. And I don't know if you can see it, but that's the, the black wire with the yellow stripe for the kill switch. It was unhooked. So the kill switch was unhooked. The kill wire going to the CD was unhooked. The coils was completely broke off and I decided to go ahead and get some of the stuff off of here before I dive too far into this thing but because with the throttle not working um, and everything else this might be a big rabbit hole. <laughs> See nothing overly ground in this wire or rubbed through under there. That looks good. But boy, look at the nasty on this. But I decided I was going to go ahead and just see the do the finish the fax check, and let's see. If she can even be salvaged. It is one salty, salty motor. So, um, let's take and put the old compressionis in the bottom cylinder and see what we get. You can do it, man. I can do it. Let me move you over here a little bit. Okay. We are zero on the bottom. Let's take the old half mil walk in. Give her some spin. Felt good. It felt did good. What do we get? What do we get? Woohoo! One twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, about one forty on that. Now I did spray a long time ago when I first got this motor. I sprayed some lube in those cylinders, um, just because of the conditionis of this motor. And uh, it was not seized up when it came in here. If you want to go back and look at that video, it's on there. So we are zero on the top. Spin it over. That one felt pretty good too. What we get, what we get? 150. 160 something and like I said those are artificially high because I, I sprayed triflo in there or something I can't remember what it was but the parent being it's gonna have decent compression so now I will go ahead and get set up and I'm gonna go ahead and pull that carbon flywheel off of there I'll be right back well there's where I'm at you can see a little staining on the uh, floor right there in front of that. I put Thor, my impact, half inch impact on it. That wouldn't budge it. So now I'm trying a breaker bar. And keep in mind, this is just to get the flywheel nut off. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to let it soak for a little bit with uh, some PB Blaster on that nut there. 
and I might heat it just a little bit. You can't go all gangbusters hot with that because you got to seal with that crankshaft. It runs right through. I can heat it a little. Finesse. Finesse. So let me let it soak for a little bit. I'll be back. Okay. So what I did, I put some PB. I, I actually sprayed PB Blaster on anything that I could get PB Blaster on. Especially that flywheel nut. Because if everything's as rusty under there or corroded as it is on the rest of this motor, I don't know if it'll be able to be saved. I squirted PB Blaster on the clamps, on the blum, on the blum, 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 and the blum. And you, yeah, the carburetor uh, butterflies are froze up. Don't even know if I'm going to be able to get this nut off of right here. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. Look at it. It might be a half a flat at a time, not even. But I can get to it. Luckily, it froze in the, in the just right spot to be frozen. Yeah, so I can't move the cam roller or nothing. Yeah. So, but that old flywheel nut, like I said, I can't go heating that thing all willy-nilly because there's a seal in there, and I'm not sure if I can even get parts for an old Tahatsu like this. I have no idea what year it is. I don't know what year. Oldie but goodie. Oldie but goodie. Get that boat there out of my way. Hey, I'm gonna give you a tip. I'm gonna give you a tip. Now, when you're taking apart anything mechanical, it don't matter what. You're working on an old lawnmower. It don't matter what. It don't matter what. The first thing you want to do is take off. Hear me now. The hardest. Let's say you're taking a mower deck off. The hardest to reach nut, bolt, or whatever it's going to take to get that thing off. That's the first one you take off. Don't go, well, I'll just pop these ones off because they're easy to get to. No, no, no. That's not how it works. See, you want to get like this one. I got to get this hardest to reach one. Because if you can't get that one, everything else is going to just be wasting your time. So, anyway, I've got a bolt down here and I can get it one flat at a time. Or excuse me, a nut, and then down here. And I think that's all there will be to getting this old cob of rape off here. But uh, it's going to take me a minute. The old cob of rape. Did I mention it was dirty? It's rough. Well. Everything about this motor has been rough. It's coming along. Will it be a runner? I don't know. We still got the electronic part to do, the ignition and all that. But one or two steps at a time. I'm just cleaning the outer body of this thing before I even crack it open. It is filthy. So that's what I'm gonna do. This is filthy. So I'm gonna let this soak for a second. And we'll clean it some more and rinse it off. Okay. Now let's open this old cobble. Rape her up, see what we get. Oh, 
Now for as bad as this motor was, that ain't too bad. In fact, it's quite clean in there. Which ways to have? Look at that. Who knew? That is quite clean. Heck. Yeah. That is pretty nice. So, I'll need to get that fuel pump apart as well. And we will start that. With the old van pliers, with the teeth and the ness, 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 ness. Ooh, not good. Mm. Now that one came. Not that one. Well, shoot. I think what I'm going to do, I got one one of these to move and the other ones are just they're, they're, I can feel they want to just break right off and because this fuel pump is part of the car body I don't want to break them off so I think I'm gonna do some soaking in um, well first I'm gonna put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and See if, and add a little bit of heat to it, not a lot. And see, okay, the upper chamber came right off. Of course, they look good. And let's drop them out and see what they look like. Come on out of here. Come out of there. Wee -hee. It looks pretty good too. So, of course, you can't heat anything there because it's all plastica. And the butterfly is a little bit froze there for the choke and, and so is the uh, for the throttle. I can move it but it's sticky. But that's what I'm going to do first is put it in the ultrasonic cleaner with a little heat. Turn the heater on in the ultrasonic cleaner. Heat things up. Let it soak for a little bit while we tend to some other stuff. That's what I'm going to do. So I'll be back. Okay, now we've got uh, the old carburetor in the ultrasonic cleaner with some heat getting on it. Uh, and I may have to turn it up on its side where those fuel pump screws uh, are and let it soak for a day or so. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't want to break them off. Um, it just becomes a big hassle. So I would like to coax them out of there. But uh, overall, the little Tohatsu is coming along pretty decently. The carb, hopefully we can get the fuel pump apart and get that. We still got some ignition issues to overcome for sure. And like I said, it's not like I got a big stack of Tohatsu sitting out there. So I got to kind of maneuver a little bit carefully on this one because I'm not sure what's available out there for it. I'll have to get on the old inner screen and look it up and see what's available. So um, I do have a basic manual uh, for it and hopefully can get some part numbers and whatnot off of that out of the out of the uh, parts index in there and find what I need if I need any more parts. But it's getting a little long, it's getting a little late, and so I'm going to go ahead and call that a wrap. Thank you for watching. That's one more hack from Cody.
ya. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.